Hi, I'm Dan Barker, and welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. We are a national organization of atheists and agnostics and secular humanists with more than 31,000 non-religious members in North America. We work to keep state and church separate and to educate the public about non-theism. And we hope that you will want to join us. We'd be glad to send you a free copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. You can help us in our vital work so that reason in our secular constitution will prevail by becoming a member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation at ffrf.org. My guest today are Hypatia Alexandria and David Tamayo. They are the founders of Hispanic American Freethinkers. It's a national organization dedicated to advancing Latino culture through science and reason. So, Hypatia and David, bienvenidos. Muchas a free gracias. Thought Matters. Gracias. So, uh, Hypatia, you're from Chile? Yes. Uh, original, Origi I'm from Chile, but I've spent more than three fourths of my life here, so I feel very much part of this country. But I'm constantly looking to work towards reason for Latinos in the United States. And David, you're from Colombia, right? Colombia. Yeah. My family uh, migrated to the U.S. Uh, in the early 70s, uh, when we, this country used to have factories. And uh, so I was 11 years old then, and um, I've been here ever since. And you still work in, like, public relations, or you were? Well, um, Right now, I'm kind of taking a sabbatical because I'm doing my PhD. Ah. So uh, with age, your brain slows a little bit, so it's taking me <laughs> twice as much work. Well, you're not old yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on my way there. So my, I, I was kind of out of shape. It's like running. If you stop running for a while, then you have to start running slowly again to keep up with everyone else, and that's what I've been doing. I love it. What's I don't the PhD going to be? Uh, it's going to be in transportation, and my focus is going to be on uh, uh, automated uh, uh, vehicles. Wow. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I love what I'm doing. I hope I can make a difference. I hope I can solve at least one millionth of a problem in the Washington, D.C. area when it comes to transportation. Wow, well, they need it there. And, and yep. David, you're in uh, IT, right? You're a, yep. Uh, I'm chief information officer for uh, a large uh, engin aerospace engineering company. Wow. And uh, I've been there for, uh, it's unusual, I've been there for 22 years now. Wow. So since high school. Wow. Since, <laughs> since, uh, wow. since grade school. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no. And uh, I love technology, love, uh, which is why I love her PhD. We talk a lot about the technologies yeah. that, that are involved in, in uh, transportation, the autumn. You know, children born today are never going to get a driver's license. Wow. Uh, Maybe, huh? Yeah. Wow, okay. It's, it's so I see you have your Hoffrey uh, pin, and I have one also that yeah, you gave me. Nice. Hoffrey is Hispanic American. Free thinkers. And the two of you basically started the group uh, in like 2011 or so? Officially in 2011, but we met uh, way before then. Uh, yeah. Planeta Libre Pensadores yeah. was the. Uh, yeah. And uh, we looked around and there weren't any uh, atheists, agnostics, or uh, uh, any group like that uh, that were the spent in the Latino community. Yeah. So. We decided so, let's do some uh, let's start do some meetups yeah. and uh, you know build it and they shall come and yeah. so people started showing up and to you know talk about their stories and we've realized that there was no culture there was nothing that addressed the cultural aspect of of atheism and, and hispanidad you know the yeah. Hispanic uh, being Hispanic and so you know we went and yeah and and it was a little bit different path for for us because. I was born this way. This is not a conversion at a later time in life. Mm. I was born this way. I'm the pro product of a Catholic school. They were never able to be successfully in brainwashing me. Um, so, you know, it was just a way to learn to express myself and to get other people that felt like I did to be more open about it, which I've been doing forever, but I. I wasn't focused and I didn't know exactly how to go about it, but having a group has helped me, you know, I don't go out and try to uh, uh, um, convert people, but I do 
make my point. Uh, one example, I just came out out of the closet in front of a, 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 a politician because uh. I want the secular agenda to be part of the conversation. And I think that's very important. Now, I don't know if he's going to ever call me back, but I did, I did mm -hmm. say it and I did express that, you know, I don't stand by uh, religious agendas only. I want to be included. I don't yeah. want to be a side conversation or a potential conversation. I want to be part of the conversation, not me personally, but what the secular me movement uh, uh, implies and conveys. You Just, told me that when you were at the Catholic school, the nuns slapped you in the face. Oh, yes. And, <laughs> and that, was, that was the kill. I think that was what really did it for me. I mean, I still remember I was like in probably 10th grade and she, we were in a religion class and she was like an, Aiden, an a, a Eve and the apple and this and that. And I just did this. Hmm. And she slapped me, and I'm going like, I will never forgive you for huh. that. So do you remember the name of the sister? Luciana. <laughs> ah. Sister Luciana. <laughs> but you were you raised as a believer, right? Yes, as a believer, and uh, I only got smarted about age 43. Ah. Uh, the, never, uh, never really had a, a, a conversation about atheism with anyone or anything. I was dry, I do audio books a lot, and so I was driving home, listening to uh, Stephen Hawking, you know, Brief History of Time. Mm -hmm. And for the second time I was listening to it, he was talking about these worlds that are billions of years away that, uh, that are no longer there because the light just, is just arriving now. And I realized, so wait a minute, the Catholic Church says that everything was created for us. Hmm. Those worlds were not created for us. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. I wonder what else doesn't make sense. And that was the, you know, you start pulling that uh, fiber out of a sweater, it took it apart. And now you're wearing this pin, which is the letter A, the letter T, and the letter O, which oh. in Spanish, explain that. Yeah, so in Spanish, if you spell each letter, A, 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 T, T, O, uh, yeah. Ateo, is the word for atheist. It, it pronounces, if you say A-T-O in Spanish, it pronounces the word atheist. Yes. Wow, there you go, so. So this is, this is sort of the logo that we use, it's the sort of the international atheist logo for Latinos, is this A-T-O in a circle. Uh, and yeah. that, so it's a way, it's, you know, it's like Freemasons have a, a, a square and compass and other things to denote yeah. symbols, you know, symbolism is part yeah. of yeah. of our lives, so. But it really takes one to know one because it's like 95% of the people is like, what, what is, is that? <laughs> you know, and, and I think it's, it's very good to have like a symbol that can unite yeah. uh, secularism and the one, uh, one umbrella. And, and Re religions so have done a lot of right things, and that was one of them. They, they made a symbol. Symbolisms, and with symbol, you don't have to explain well, things. Copy the successful people. Yeah. So uh, there's a stereotype uh, that Hispanics, Hispanic Americans especially, they're all Catholics and they're all believers and they're all church goers and Hispanic Latin American women are all very submissive quiet and they want to have I 12 am. babies and I they... am I have 12 babies not <laughs> no you don't you have one child I think one too many oh <laughs> I love him to death but it's one too many so so uh, is that part of what you're trying to combat the stereotype of Hispanic Americans so is that why Hoffrey exists so there let me give you a quick some statistics there are 58 million Hispanics in the United States. Okay. It's the, uh, the largest minority in, in the country. They, his, they are in all races and all forms, and only 52% of them are Catholic. Ah. The rest are not. And so it, it turns out that every religion is going after the Hispanics. Uh, the, over 200,000 Hispanics have converted to Islam in the United States. Wow. So, and you know, sometimes they convert to when they convert, they're even more, you know, uh, what I say, uh, stronger. They, they, it's like they want to make up for lost time. And so they're more hardcore. Yeah. But uh, the, we wanted, Hafri was to address the cultural aspect of being an atheist, of being a non-believer or a skeptic. And we didn't call it Hispanic atheist. We called it Hispanic free thinkers because it involves more than just the religion aspect of it. It's also in the Latino culture, there's a lot of magic stuff, a lot of powders and, and, and witchcraft and a lot of other uh, BS yeah. that basically makes uh, uh, people lose money a lot of it, especially the people that can least afford it. So how many Hispanics are free thinkers in the country? About 18%. 18? 18% uh, are, well, no, not free thinkers, that's going too far. 
they're nuns. So they don't, they don't, they still believe you in something. You mean N-O-N-E-S. Exactly. None of the above. None nuns. of the above. And they are, uh, they're just not giving money to churches, which is just fine with me. <laughs> in fact, I would say that that's a win. We call that a win because without money, churches stop existing. And, uh, and so with the idea is to serve as, as a platform where Latinos can come and talk and, and discuss, you know, their different uh, things uh, that makes them uh, different than the rest of, you know, like yeah. any other American. Uh, the way they become atheists in a Hispanic family is different than a regular family uh, becomes so atheists. So 18%. Hypatia, we had you on our radio show in 2012, mm -hmm. and you told us then that it was 12%. Mm -hmm. So it's growing. It's growing, but it's still, I still feel that that, that needs much to be done, especially when it comes to women. Women are being left behind because I would be interested in learning about how that 18% is broken down because women are still way, way behind men. And as education level goes down, I think it gets worse. So, uh, you know, and I'm not promoting myself, but you know, they need to bring more women into conferences, yeah. Latino women, and have them speak. So those girls, those younger women, have somebody to talk to or to th at least feel that there is already somebody there. And I don't think that is happening right now. Women within the atheist community, Latino women, are still way behind every other group. It, There's what, a lack of role, of role models there. Yeah. So part of what we're trying to get is role models for other girls to see that, hey, yeah, I can, you know, I've been in uh, a CIO for a long time and I've been in IT for 30 years. I have never met once a Hispanic woman who's an IT manager, uh. ever, at any level. And so that needs to change. Yeah. When we educate uh, the, the, the Hispanic kids, especially the women, then the, the, you know, the de facto, what happens is, you know, what happens is that they, they lose religion. I notice on your web page, uh, you have a, a motto there that says, advancing Latino culture through, through science and reason, right? Exactly. Or through reason Very and well. science. So the idea is to advance the culture and to, to bring more science and more IT and more, and, and you, um, Hypatia, one thing you did is you changed your name. Mm -hmm. I knew you by a different name. Now mm -hmm. you're identifying with the F Hypatia of Alexandria. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm all out there. I, I make no apologies for what I am. Yeah. I make no apologies for the way I was born. I make no apologies that I went to a Catholic school and I came out this way. And, and I think it, it, to me, it's a huge honor to have such a beautiful name from such an overlooked woman. I think if she hadn't been killed, society would have, we would have be probably millions or no hundreds of thousands here ahead where we are so right now. So maybe you are advancing that that legacy. We have to take a break now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're talking with Hypatia Alexandria and David Tamayo, the founders of Hispanic American Freethinkers. And after the break, we'll be right back with more Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. My name is Ryan Jane, and I'm an atheist because the vast and fascinating world that we find ourselves living in is cheapened by the idea of a man like God. And I'm an atheist because the rich and precious experience of being a human alive on earth is cheapened by empty promises of an eternal afterlife. We live in a time when more than ever we need to be encouraging objective thinking and seeking objective thinkers who will come up with real solutions to problems in the real world. I think it's disturbing that nevertheless, atheism it continues to be viewed by many as a dirty word. I want my daughter to grow up in a world where it's okay to say, I accept reality as it is for better or worse, and I don't believe in man-made myths and monsters. That's why I'm an out of the closet atheist.
And welcome back to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker, co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and we're continuing our conversation with the founders of Hispanic American Freethinkers, Hypatia Alexandria and David Tamayo. So what are some of the things that your group does? Do you have activities or meetings or what? We have a, a lot of, uh, yeah, the typical things, picnics. Uh, we have, you know, food and drinks and, you know, uh, dances and, uh, and things like that. But one of the best things that we do is have conversations about culture and how culture uh, is different and how it affects uh, a lot of the times how, whether people come out or don't come out. Part of the problem is that a lot of people, including in our in the secular movement, that they say we shouldn't question uh, culture. We shouldn't, uh, 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 if someone's culture is to do X, it's their culture. Let's just leave it alone. Culture, in my opinion, is just religion. Uh, it's, it's created by men. It's man-made. And in some cultures, there are good things and bad things. And right. usually it's never ma women-made. It's usually male-made, male right? <laughs> exactly. Of course, of and course. for some reason, therefore, the males get yeah. you know, all the advantage. The upper hand. But, yeah. but I, I have a quote that I wanted to show you in, in okay. reference to that. There's uh, a couple of, uh, uh, there's a, Cal a Calvinist, uh, Henry Van Til. Uh, he might be dead by now. And basically, he said, culture is religion externalized. And religion is culture internalized. Uh, and so the idea is, you know, the, the culture is, is religion, you know, what you're showing your religion. And that's why you see these cultures where women have to cover and they have to do, even in the, in the you know, I remember my grandmother covering her head before going into Catholic church. Catholic school, yeah. In Catholic. So the idea is that we tell people that it's okay to question things because uh, as Hispanics, we have our own cultures, multi, you know, the different cultures. Uh, there are a lot of subcultures. Yeah. And so the idea is to get these uh, uh, people to question some things and get the good things and, get, and take yeah. out the bad thing, create a new culture, a new better culture. And it's not even creating a new culture. I think it is to find a solution for issues. You have to question what is current in front of you. And there is no culture that is perfect. Like David said, some things are good, some things are bad. But if you don't talk about them, how do you choose what to keep and what to get rid of? So it is, you know, we don't teach Hispanics or we don't attempt to teach what to think, but we want to let them know that they have an option on how to think about something. And I think that's, that's very important. So our show is pre-recorded, but it, as, as of today, I know you're planning to do a debate in Puerto Rico um, about can you be good without God? Can, can free thinkers be good without religion? I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I feel I'm good. I, you know, I don't go out and kill people. I don't commit fraud. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't hurt people just because I'm atheist. Uh, you know, I have, sometimes I feel I, my morals are in a bigger or more strict place than religious people. So, you know, I, I feel perfectly comfortable saying that I'm atheist and I'm a good person, just not a God person. Well, and, and that's, a, I mean, any time you look at any religions, they have their holy books, right? That tells them it's a guide for their morality, but they cherry pick. And so in order to cherry pick, they have to decide themselves what is good and what is not so good. And, and, and oh, well, slavery, yeah, there's a whole chapter on slavery, you know, uh, more yeah. than that in, in, in the Bible. Yeah, we're, we're going to ignore that. We're just going to huh. go with this other nicer thing. So, yes, the debate, I think, is, is to show that uh, secularists, uh, that people without religion, that that's something that we evolved, uh, you know, biologically. That is not something that was dictated by anyone because, you know, people tend to be good in every religion, in every culture. Uh, and people are, just, that's sort of our nature is, is why we're so successful by having, you know, 7 billion people in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. If we didn't get along and, and weren't good to each other, that wouldn't have happened. So yeah. I understand that HAFRI, Hispanic American Freethinkers, has members representing all Latin American countries and people born in the United States as well. Um, are your meetings in Spanish or are you bilingual or is it primarily in English or See. Si. <laughs> See? It's both? It's both. Spanglish. 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 Spanish. It's whatever English. you feel comfortable with. Uh. And it's, and if, now if we have a person that doesn't speak any English at all, then we, you know, some of, some, you know, some will make an effort. There are some that don't speak Spanish at all, but they, they're still Latinos, you know. Like third generation maybe. Yeah. Right. Hispanics have been in the United States since the 1500s, you know. In, in 1776, when we became the United States, 
more than half of the continental United States was, you know, was owned by uh, Mexico or Spain. Yeah. And so, you know, the idea that the Hispanics just can't, you know, are just immigrants is, is really false. Well, we just came from New Mexico and that's really New Mexico, that's yeah. Mexico Nuevo. I mean, it's like being in Mexico, it's just that it's called New Mexico, yeah. and it was great, I mean, I loved it. Uh, and it has like a little twist from the United States, you know, but it's kind of a melting of both countries and both uh, p uh, kind of, uh, I don't wanna say cultures, but ideologies, and you get this very particular, very nice New Mexico. You can I loved get to it. enjoy everything, you know, that's yeah. the idea. Just because you know you become an American or you are you are a Colombian or what you don't, it doesn't it, you actually add to it. And so what we tried, we go to talk to uh, kids in schools a lot, uh, mm -hmm. high school. And one of the you know usually comes up where someone would say, oh, I'm very proud to be from El Salvador. And I stop and say, why? You had no choice. It's mm -hmm. an accident of nature. Uh, if you're so proud of being from your home country, then someone is going to turn and judge you from being from that country which you're not gonna to wanna to be judged by something you had, you know, you should be proud for the things that you uh, yeah. have accomplished yourself. And so the idea is to, to tell them, to, uh, we talked a lot to the immigrant kids, again, to teach them how to think and to teach them that you should question everything because anything that is true wants to be questioned. And a perfect example of that is, you know, when you're in, in school, the teacher will always say, uh, give a lesson and say, are there any questions? Please ask, ask. Yeah. When you go to church, the preacher yeah. gives you a sermon and it's like, ask. don't ask, <laughs> <laughs> don't question, accept it. And so that's the difference between dogmatism and actual learning something. And so we try to show that to the kids and hopefully they carry that on, uh, you know, in their everyday life. But so at, make it natural. But at least you can be kind of respectful of acknowledging your culture. Mm -hmm. I belong to an American Indian tribe mm -hmm. and my brothers and I are pretty much just, what are, they're called apples, you know, mm -hmm. red on the outside, white on the inside. But uh, we don't we don't worship our culture, but we're kind of happy and proud of where we came from. I mean, it's like, you well, know. Well, that's the, that's the point, you know, is, you know, like I, I did 23andMe and I am a smorgasbord of races and ethnicities. Yeah. And I feel proud of every single one of them. I'm black, I'm European, I'm Indian, or, uh, you know, I just everything yeah. that you can think of. And I think I enjoy the good things of each one of them, but I don't worship any particular one uh, just because culture. The, the problem is when, it, when that culture becomes a, a, a barrier. So a lot of the kids in the DC area are, from, uh, are children of parents that came in, uh, from the Central American Wars uh, in the 80s and they, uh, and in the 90s. And so they are taking them out of school, at, uh, the girls, they take them out of school at age 16 uh, because yeah, a girl doesn't need an education. And you know, they, uh, in church, they, they be, a lot of them join very uh, Pentecostal groups, things like that, that are kind of hardcore, where the women are not allowed to cut their hair. They're not allowed to talk to uh, boys. They, have, they segregate them in church, et cetera. So the idea is to teach them that, that culture is good, but you, get, you gotta take the good aspects yeah. of it. I grew up in Central Falls, Rhode Island, a very uh, a Colombian, a Colombian uh, town. And a lot of the uh, people didn't leave. They liked it there because they felt like they were in Colombia. So my dad has been in the United States for 50 years and doesn't speak English. So he's still in Colombia, that he's been yeah, here 50. Exactly. Wow. And he feels like he's never left Colombia. It's, it's Colombia without the insecurity that the real Colombia has. Well, a lot of immigrant cultures, especially some Muslim countries, they want to bring their Sharia law with them. And the, you know, the way they treat women, they think they can just import it into a Western country, but. Uh, well, and, uh, and, and the idea is, if, if that's so good, why'd you stay? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but I think that's, that's what is so dangerous to say. You have to respect my culture. Yeah. So if my culture is cutting girls' hymen, that, that yeah. means that I cannot touch you because it's your culture? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't subscribe to that. Uh, I think, like I said, and I'm gonna repeat this because it's, it's pretty much what I do all the time. I will take the good things about your culture because all cultures have good things, but I will reject the bad ones and I will not live my life by anybody's culture. I will live my, my life according to my morals. And part part of know. our culture in, in the US is that it's this idea, may not be practiced, but the idea that we're all equal. And so 
when you give uh, up, when you respect another culture here in the United States and, and say, oh, well, that's your culture, I'm going to let you abuse your, your women and your whatever, then what you're really doing is giving up yeah. part your, of culture. your culture. <laughs> you're giving up your culture for their culture. So why is your culture more important than somebody there, else's culture? I argue that there are some cult that parts of culture that are better than others from yeah. in other cultures. And, you know, uh, uh, cutting the clitoris of, of young women uh, for religious reasons is, is one where I would say, yep, that's bad. Yeah, that's Be it your culture or not, yeah. that's bad. Yeah. So, so that's, the, that's the idea. I mean, we, musica, you know, food, yeah, you know, there's that, lots of, of good that's stuff. That's good, yeah. that's good. You that's have a, fun, you have a great time, but, you even know. Even dressing is we fine. We also have shortcomings or handicaps yeah. or whatever you want to call it. So <laughs> why should I expect anyone else outside the Latino culture or group, ethnic group, to say, well, you know, that's her thing, so I can't not say anything because I'm an mm -hmm. offender. That's another word that I really, really dislike, well, the thank you, word. thank you for coming on the show. It looks like you've kind of created your own culture of free thinkers. <laughs> uh, yeah. You told me a few years ago that a lot of Hispanic American free thinkers are lonely and they want to find other people. So how can we find you online? It's hafri.com. Org. 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 Hafri org. Very simple. Thank H -H you, Hypatia Alexandria and David Tamayo. Thank you for being on Free Thought Matters. Un million de gracias. Thank you for having us. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters because Free Thought Matters. I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.